Hi, my name is Ingus and I'm the founder and owner of a company called IGS Electronics. We are pretty much uh, specialized in buying and selling uh, short plus industrial electronics and uh, our primary uh, trading platform is eBay. Basically, today I have decided to start uh, make some uh, YouTube videos of, uh, of uh, some of the most common things that I sell and uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, questions that have been asked about uh, some of the equipment I sell is uh, about single to three phase inverter drive so I decided to make this video of uh, sort of a basic introduction of uh, what single phase drives are and what they do and then pretty much what is the primary use because there seems to be a lot of confusion of what they can do and then and then and, and, and their, 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 their abilities and things like that so a lot of people getting it wrong and uh, misunderstanding that then between uh, things like static converters uh, rotary converters and and then things like that that they think they just can plug in and then and, and, and off it goes and unfortunately that is not the case so I pretty much decided to make a video to explain in uh, stop pretty much working on these drives and videos and because I do a lot of testing of them and then not just the drives that do a lot of PLCs and uh, servos and things like that but uh, so most common ones that, that, that a lot of people are asking questions about this single phase drive so pretty much I'm gonna uh, sort of explain what they are and how they work and then and, and, what to look out for so uh, today we are uh, in this uh, table as you can see we've got uh, two pieces of equipment which is one of them is a Yaskawa G1000 drive which is if you look at the let me just turn around if you look at the data plate it's a 0.75 kilowatt uh, for the fans and 0.55 for more heavier loads which i will explain later on in this video why they are like that but as you can see it's a single phase in 200 to 240 volts and uh it says uh, three phase out uh 240 volts so uh and, and obviously it's got a uh, little uh, rfi uh filter on it that comes with it as well later on in the video we'll be talking about that as well what they do and why you need them and our little uh, test motor we've got in here which is a SEW uh, three-phase uh, motor dual voltage can run both so you can see in here in the video it says that uh, in Delta it will be 230 volts and in star it's gonna run at 400 volts so pretty much just like a testy motor we have which obviously is this 0.37 kilowatt as well so what is single phase drive so single phase inverter drives are basically running just motors they don't run any other equipment and then in a lot of questions have been asked yeah, can i use this to run a car ramps or can I just uh, wire my plug to it and it, it will run? No, that is not the case. There is, is, is a lot more to it. And uh, to basically, to in, 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 in a short word saying that single phase drive runs only motors. Drive, motor. That is, it, it will not run any of your electronics, any of your start buttons. Yes, it will actually run your start buttons, but if you never had the drive in there, then uh, you will have to do a little bit, quite a bit extra wiring to get it set up and then and, and to be able to run your existing equipment because most likely in, in, in your case, if you're converting three-phase machine to single phase, you will need to do a bit more extra wiring if you go in the cheaper version, which is single phase, uh, single three-phase uh, drives. Uh, cheaper than uh, static and rotary converters which can run your machine with just a plug into it and things like that but you're looking to spend three times probably four times as much as what you, what you would spend for the drives 
that they are single to three phase. So uh, you have decided that you are uh, you have an equipment. Let's say you have a three phase saw that you just purchased and you have decided to go with the single phase drive. So uh, how do you choose one? So what to look for and, and then what information do you need to be able to buy one? It's actually quite simple. So first things first, you need to know what your uh, uh, motor rating is. I know it sounds a bit cliche, but uh, some people don't know uh, what they need to look for to be able to do that. So basically look at your motor plate and see what the KV, KW rating is. And that this in, in, in this form we can see is 0.37 kilowatt. So once you identified your motor, so uh, that uh, you, your kilowatt rating of your motor, the next thing is to make sure is a dual voltage. I personally have not seen the motor yet that would be not dual voltage. So, but uh, there is all the versions, there is some motors out there that I heard and then and, and, and possibly do exist that uh, they don't have dual voltage into them, they just run 415 in most cases. That's as far as I've seen. Don't know, most likely there's some other ones, but that's as far as I know. But in general, I don't know what year they started manufacturing dual voltage and sort of became a standard. So I personally, in, 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 in the nine years of engineering, uh, electrical engineering, I have not seen one that doesn't have dual voltage onto it. So, so basically, why dual voltage? So basically, dual voltage basically so allows the motor to be run in uh, two states, which is uh, in a 240 state and a 220 state. So basically, three phases, 415 combined, and then or changing to 220. So there's a, I made a little uh, printout from the computer. As you can see down here, this is where it shows you what the terminal should be set up. So you can see down there, the star is set up little plates all across between the W2, U2 and V2. And it can, and it can be used for three phase 415 or Delta connection, which is connected like so, which is running at a voltage to 20 as you can see down here i have already set this motor up to run to 20 so whatever you do do make sure these these plates are your primary thing to set up and uh, they are done correctly to this kind of setup which you can see down here in a bit of a drawing but if you want more information about all of this in details and blah 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 uh, google is your best friend so the next thing that you need to do is then you go for the drive itself so uh that's quite easy actually you just identify the kilowatt rating and you choose a drive so what sort of drive? So I personally, in 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 in, 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 in years of being in a, in a, in industry, I have what out that is I never buy the drives uh, close to kilowatt rating of the motor. Very much the same of kilowatt rating of the motor. I try. To, I mean, it it doesn't say it's bad, and it's not going to work. It will work, and then and, and all other things that it will do the job and. And if you don't literally run on a max at all times and and then and, and, and pretty much yeah that it's just running on a max at all times you you i don't think you have much to worry about but i personally like to use if i got 0.37 kilowatt water i would go for 0.55 drive for in a little bit heavy load Heavy loads you can see in the data plan then it says 0.55 kilowatt heavier loads. So why do they have these two uh, kilowatt ratings to it? So one of them is uh, for light loads and other one is for heavy loads. So the drive is pretty much capable of keeping up or, or pretty much it just handles it a lot, lot better. It doesn't mean it's not going to handle 0.75 kilowatt motor but under the heavy loads he might struggle so uh, basically as this motor as you can see down there is an SEW 
and uh, it come is literally came off the gearbox. And the gearboxes, uh, why people use gearboxes and things like that, we will talk about it in later videos. There's a very very good advantage for them, especially for speed controls and things like that. And another thing is uh, why people are choosing a uh, single to three phase inverter drives is there's a lot of fun a lot of really good functions in there which are like you can implement good safeties into it you can implement the, the stop starts you can implement a, a speed controls you can slow things down and then speed things up and then uh, and have a better better way of controlling it and things like that so it sort of gives you if you just use a normal DOL starter this is uh, this is like next level like gives you a lot more a lot more what's the word for it a lot more diversity so you can do a lot more things than just pressing the start and go so uh very much in the later videos i am uh, i'll be running uh in uh, pretty much uh testing a lot of a lot of these drives on 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 live cameras so you'll be able to see how well they perform what they do and how good they are their pricing and things like that and touching on pricing a little bit on that subject as well is as you can see this is a discover manufacturer which is a well-known company in, a, in, the, in the world and in, in a well respected in, a, in the automated industry and their drives uh, are not cheap i'll tell you that and then and, and many times you're going to go on ebay and you're going to see all these nameless chinese drives what i call it they really don't even have manufacture on it quite often you don't know where they come from and and they're in my in, in my view i personally never bought one because uh, i've seen some videos and they just don't sound good and then and then and, and, and it's, it's 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 just not built well in my view so i stick to well-known manufacturers that have got a uh, massive track record of of, of quality and performance of their drive so i try to stick to to, to what i know and then and, and, and i don't i know that the cheaper they go the worse they're gonna be and then and, and, and the more actually the more expensive they go they're gonna be better but to certain level so basically what i say for certain levels is you'll find sometimes the same drive literally pretty much the same data plate saying 0.75 kilowatt and yet it's about three to four hundred pounds more and the reason it is more is because is what they put inside those drives is a lot of the you know automated industry requires a very very fine tuning of a lot of things and adding uh, better controls and and, and uh, better possibilities for the drive to to to, to cope in, in 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 a very unique environment so they add a lot of electronics into them and and, and in many aspects if you're just looking at the run uh lay or saw or car ramps or whatever you are trying to convert it's just wouldn't it would be just a waste of money so there's they go to a certain level and then when they start you, you usually you can see the substantial jump straight away so if you don't need fancy fancy stuff stay away so just buy the basics which in this case this one is is, is a, what, they, what i would call a medium controls he's got uh forgot what's that bloody thing called but you can connect that to to other things to be for communication purposes and things like that again you would not need that unless you are going into fancy dancy business this is just uh you don't require to know don't even need to know anything about that if you're using it for basic stuff perfect just start stop and then and, and, and other bits that you require wire up the motor and things like that which we will gonna be looking into uh, into a uh, later videos how, uh, uh, how how to wire it up what to do what to look out how to set it up how to uh, add more controls to it and potentiometer start stop buttons and all the other bits and pieces the safety circuits and there's a lot a lot of things to consider to build a good system i'm not saying that i'm perfect at it but i have found the ways that i personally work with that works for me and then hopefully whoever is watching this he might give you some insight and help uh what to look out for and if you do go this road and do decide to go for the 
inverted drives this would be the way to go basically to wrap up this video is uh, pretty much summarize uh, of what we have talked about pretty much the video is, is more of an informative video of uh, what to look for and 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 and, and, and the makes and the pricing and uh, all uh, motors and kilowatt ratings and bits and pieces like that and then in the later videos we're going to look in more into depth and start pretty much wiring these things up and running and see how they sound and what works better what doesn't we can test different drives in different uh, different uh, ways and uh, we start playing with a lot of these controls and uh, bigger buggers and things like that and uh, Pretty much, we're gonna go from there. So, uh, hope this inf uh, this video has been informative. Not sure helpful, but I'm trying to keep it as basic as possible. Obviously, a lot of people will think, "Oh my God, this is so short, uh, short understanding." But I think for the basics, that's all you would really need. And then, pretty much after that, it's just pretty much get your hands dirty and get wired in and wiring in. So, and then obviously, as I'm gonna be wiring these things, so we're gonna be talking about a lot of safety laws and things like that that we need to follow so you can't just jump to it and just do whatever you want there's a lot of things to to look out for like cable sizes reading the manuals and other bits but that would be for the later video so i hope this video has been helpful not sure let me know and uh in the next video we get this baby boy wired up and see how it works and what he can do Thanks for watching, see you next video.